the evolution of technology. Computers, AI, and cell phones for millennials. That's what a lot of people think of with technology. But technology isn't just about what we have in our hands, what we have at home. According to the Oxford Dictionary, technology is the application of scientific knowledge with practical purpose. So that means a lot more than just phones. For example, fire is a really good analogy for this. Uh, one of the earliest forms of technology, you need to figure out what materials are flammable. You need to figure out how to maintain a fire, and you need to figure out how to put it out. Without this, humanity, we wouldn't have popcorn. We wouldn't be able to cook, make delicious s'mores in the summertime. Wheels are also a really good example that we have here. A uh, show of hands, how many people got here via bus, bike, car? Okay, so most of us see uh, we need to learn something from the sustainability talk, I see. But there's more than that, and I hope that with this presentation, I'm able to show all of you not just different forms of technology to appreciate what we have in our day-to-day -day lives, but to encourage all of you to find your passion to invest not just for us, but for the future. So medicine is a really good example. It's the one I wanted to bring it up because I actually have experience in this field and there's a lot of diversity with it. Whether you like working in a laboratory, working in a hospital, or more the manufacturing end to produce drugs that can both be cheaper with more supply and demand and to be able to go global. My experience as an engineer working in the field of medicine was I actually got to work at a pharmaceutical company doing research and development or otherwise known as R&D. And I really like this fact about technology because you get to work with mechanical engineers, you can work with electrical engineers, you get your salesmen in there, you get your technicians. Technology doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter what gender you are, what race you are, what age you are. You can find your passion for technology with anything. Transportation. As much as we wish we could go on vacation all the time and as much as I like to pretend that's the only thing we use, there's a lot more to it. Some of the speakers today actually were able to come here through means of jets. There's other forms of transportation too that we use every day, such as vehicles. Without vehicles, we wouldn't be able to commute and be stuck in rush hour a lot of times, but we also wouldn't have suburban areas. Everybody would be stuck in things like apartments in the city so that they could walk or bike to work. With medicine and transportation combined. There's a lot of extra time we have, and when humans have extra time, they get both entertained and bored, as well as creative. So we need forms of entertainment to keep us busy with increased longevity in our lives and extra time. This picture that I've included is actually of Las Vegas, and there's a little place down in the bottom right corner called Caesar's Palace, which is a really good casino if any of you wanna go. And with casinos, there's a lot of technology that they use. They use all the lighting, all the sound effects, all the slot machines to get you hooked in. They, they include psychology with the technology as well. There's other forms though, such as movies, which come in black and white forms with no sound to some places like where I'm from, Vancouver, that actually has 4D theaters where you go in, you watch the movie in 3D and you know, if somebody dives down into the water, you see bubbles shooting across the theater, you can reach out and pop one. And if you've never been in, you know, something splashing in your face from the bubbles is a little intimidating, but to see the growth that we have from the beginning, to be able to go from black and white, no sound, to 4D movies and even 5D in the future. Imagine if you're watching a movie or TV at home and you can reach out to what Gordon Ramsay is making on the TV and taste that bacon that you can see sizzling. I'd be pretty jealous if all I smelled was bacon in my house though, so maybe we could come up with some other versions as well. Now while I'm up here telling you all about different kinds of, of technology, what good is it if I don't tell you how to discover your passion? What I mean by this is, what can each of you do to invest in our future? As some of you might not want to admit, millennials, Generation Z, we're going to be the future one day. We're going to be taking over jobs and we're going to be there in the work field and everywhere. But children more so are our predecessors, full of innovation, full of creativity, of passion, 
of knowledge that people take for granted oftentimes with curiosity. If technology leaders don't consider this valuable resource that we have, we're not only going to impact our future, but what we leave for our kids and our, our predecessors one day. You can do this by taking your kids to faculties. You can take them to camps that encourage STEM use. There's a lot of things you can do to invest in the future. You can invest money. Some of you might be interested in donating to places like the library or scientific uh, journals, TV stations that really encourage knowledge growth. If you want to make a startup company, great. You can be like Lorenzo, have your own business, be successful. Uh, some of us as students don't have the monetary necessities to be able to start this, and that might not be your passion. So if you can invest money, then this is why I put this in, but I want to show all of you that there's more to that, and hopefully you can find your section to really be a part of the future. The hardest thing to really schedule in would probably be investing time. A lot of us wake up, go to work, are so tired by the end of the day, we just sleep. We don't really have a lot of time. And time can be one of the most rewarding things. And what I mean by this is, have any of you ever tried to teach your parents, your friends, your kids how to use technology? Have any of you seen seniors trying to text and what they probably still refer to as emails? Well, showing them donating your time to help other people really discover technology and learn how to use it, that can be one of the most rewarding things that you can give somebody, the ability to explore and make informed decisions in their lives. This is a picture, albeit a little blurry, of my grandmother. Uh, if she was here, she would probably destroy me for calling me her grandmother because uh, it makes her feel a little old, so I'm going to refer to her as my nan. And my nan grew up in World War II England. She was a teenager, so she worked in the factories at the time. And so a lot in society and technology-wise has changed. And I never really thought about this until one day my aunt brought over an iPad and pulled up FaceTime, something a lot of us probably use in our day-to-day -day lives, whether through Skype or other means of video chat. And she pulled up a video on Google Maps of her old house that my grandma hasn't been to in about 50 years, just due to health complications. And my grandma's an old British lady, very sarcastic. You can probably imagine the type, very stern, doesn't often smile. To see her smiling and actually have tears in her eyes at the end of this because she was so amazed at what humanity has come up with in her lifetime was a moment that really stuck with me. Something that you can encourage people to grow in. Investing time in other people to bring joy to their world is so monumental. If any of you have daughters at home, if any of you know people with uh, daughters or boys at home. Encourage them to go into STEM and to follow their passion, whatever it may be. If I had a dollar for every time someone told me I shouldn't go into engineering and study it because I'm a female or laughed at me, I could both graduate debt-free and buy a house in Vancouver. If any of you want to help me with that, just let me know after the, uh, the presentation and we'll get talking. But you want to be able, in my opinion anyways, in life, to see the passion in someone's eyes when they talk about what they enjoy, to see somebody shaking and their voice getting faster and faster, their hands getting a little clammy and shaky as, as they talk, and they talk so fast that they get out of breath about something. To see the pure joy in someone's eyes and in their body language as they tell you, this is what I'm good at, this is what I want to do with my life, to both be happy and content with myself, but to bring that to other people. Invest in the future. Invest in technology whatever way you can. Don't wait for somebody else to do it in life, because as Gandhi once said, be the change that you want to see in the world.